Inspired by my very own weird videos playlist that I made when I was 11, I decided I wanted to compile a comprehensive iceberg on what commonly used to be referred to as the weird side of the internet. This content is part of what shaped mine as well as many others love for all things surreal and an aspect of my creativity. For better or for worse, I grew up consuming this internet media and it will forever hold a special place in my heart. Since this would be gargantuan sized on its own, I've decided to split it up into two parts. The final part should be up within the next week or so. This is basically going to be a nostalgic trip down memory lane, so if you'd like to see the way more obscure side of things, be sure to keep an eye out for the final part. We will get right into it after a word from today's sponsor, MD Hair. If you want thicker, healthier hair or are suffering hair loss, MD Hair provides clinically proven and customized hair growth treatments. I know no one knows what I look like, but I have really long hair, which can easily look weighed down, so for me, I just wanted fuller hair. This is my hair kit that I've been able to try out for the past few weeks just to give you an idea on what yours could look like. It's extremely thorough and comes with shampoo, conditioner, a serum, hair wellness supplements, and marine collagen powder. Their website uses a short quiz and scalp photo AI analysis in order to customize each kit to your personal needs. It's super simple, just click the link in the description to start your quiz and you can use my promo code Kylie70 to get an entire 70% off your first month of customized products. I've genuinely noticed my hair looking nicer whenever I use the shampoo, conditioner, and serum. I've noticed my hair looking fuller and even less frizzy. The powder is nearly flavorless along with the supplements, which for me is a plus because like nothing tastes weird. I love my hair, that's why it is long, and it's been great to see the improvements. Some extra perks of MD Hair are 24-7 dermatologist support, natural and sustainable ingredients, and their customized kits are just backed by science. Their AI technology that analyzes your scalp in the initial quiz even tracks your progress throughout time. It's overall a really cool experience and will help get you to your hair growth goals. Make sure to check out the link in the description and use code KYLIE70 to get 70% off your first month of customized hair treatment. Now let's get back to the iceberg and start by explaining the sky tier. These are going to be the household names for the weird side of the internet. To kick off the beginning of this iceberg, there was nothing more fitting than Salad Fingers. This animated series is without a doubt the epitome of internet horror, and I don't think surreal or analog horror would be remotely the same without the influence of it. Salad Fingers is an ongoing series that began in 2004 on Newgrounds. The most popular episode being Spoons, where Salad Fingers expresses his love for Rusty Spoons and wanders around the desolate world he resides in, all while Boards of Canada's Beware the Friendly Stranger plays in the background. He goes to a young child's house to inquire about their spoons, however unfortunately can only find a rusty kettle. Currently sitting at 12 episodes with one hour and 17 minutes of wonderfully bizarre content, it'd be far too much to go over every single one. Salad fingers means more to me than I could ever quickly explain in a video like this, but just know I have always intended to do a salad fingers or David Firth in general analysis on this channel. So if you like salad fingers, stick around to see what's in store for the future. A perfect mesh of 2000s humor and slightly unsettling content is Charlie the Unicorn. The original episode begins with the pink and blue unicorns pestering Charlie to go visit Candy Mountain. He reluctantly agrees, but ends up just getting his kidney stolen. The other episodes consist of more or less the same concept, with the two unicorns forcing Charlie into undesirable and peculiar situations. The I am a millipede song to this day can find its way into my head every once in a while. Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, for me, has served as a sort of metaphor for the way society almost pressures you into thinking the adult world should be boring and the feeling that you have to like let your childhood creativity go as you enter adulthood, when that shouldn't be the case, and just time slipping past us in general. 
stylized as a children's show. Each episode starts off quote unquote normal, then eventually descends into the marvelously strange content it's become so well known for. The first is an absolute classic with green is not a creative color, and I enjoy the second and sixth episodes the most after that. As of 2022, it even debuted as a television show on the UK's Channel 4. Important Videos was a playlist created in 2015 that over time amassed over 300 videos. It was deleted for a reason unknown to the creator, but due to its immense popularity, thankfully there are recompiled versions. The most honorable mentions are of course, Ye, Have You Ever Had a Dream? The infamous East Hills back to school commercial and He-Man sings for non-blondes. At one point in time, this playlist probably had shown up on your recommended countless times. And if you clicked on this video, I'd bet that back then you clicked on that playlist as well. Teddy Has an Operation is a 2013 YouTube video where a voiceover narrates the surgery that is happening to a teddy bear. I loved this video when I was in sixth grade. It's on that weird videos playlist. I don't know what specifically made it soothing for me to watch, but at one point I'd play it like all the time. The commentary consists of Teddy having bad bonbons, a crotch unicorn, and his courage sack being riddled with cockroaches that represent fear. This marks the end of what I'd consider the household names that pretty much anyone who's frequently on the internet would definitely know about. Let's get into the tip of the iceberg. In I Feel Fantastic, we have a pale bob-wigged singing android that stands at an unnatural height and resides in what I think is a very liminal looking room. In the next frame, the android is in a different outfit and striking a pose. It cuts to some woodsy backyard, then the robot delivers a few more I Feel Fantastic hey hey hey's, then it comes to an end. It was uploaded by the original creator in 2004, but didn't take off until 2009 when someone posted it to YouTube. The original YouTube upload has since been deleted, but it had 24 million views as of October 2020. The story behind this video is Terra the Android, a project that was created by John Bergeron in 2001. His goal was to sell her as a musical android and would upload videos of the android singing as a form of advertising. Username 666 was uploaded in 2008 by Nana825763, and I think was one of the first well-known examples of what we'd now consider analog horror. It depicts someone going to the channel username 666, then refreshing until it begins to deteriorate eventually turning sinister and resembling things you'd associate with hell. The person is unable to exit the window or turn off the computer, and as the screen begins erratically shaking, ends with a glitch effect. This was an art project by the user, and there's quite a few other of his works we'll be discussing throughout the iceberg. Poppy and Titanic Sinclair briefly dominated the weird YouTube niche in the mid to late 2010s. Titanic has since been outed as an abusive asshole, so it makes the content associated with him honestly sad now, but the videos featuring Poppy would consist of her saying either unexplainable or quirky things in this robotic-esque tone. It bordered on surreal comedy, but had unsettling undertones. My friends and I made videos inspired from these when we were in eighth grade because we wanted to make our own short film called Sauced at Allen's. We did not know anybody named Allen. BlankRoomSoup.avi is a video where a censored man is scarfing down soup and this being in a costume enters the room to pet him. He begins crying when a second being comes in the frame and joins in on the caressing. The eerie vibe garnered snuff film rumors, but this wasn't the case at all. The costumes are those used by performance art group Ray Ray. However, allegedly the creators of the video stole the costumes from a Ray Ray show and claimed to not be associated with the group. Dining Room or There Is Nothing has a duration of a mere minute, but it sure left its mark despite its short runtime. I'm noticing there's a bull theme going on. The video begins with an uncanny valley type of woman closing her eyes while there is a fire behind her. She opens her eyes and as the camera zooms out, she speaks backwards gibberish. She dumps her head in the bowl and this shot right here, something about the atmosphere makes it one of the few videos that ever genuinely creeped me out. The woman lifts her head up, says, there is nothing and closes her eyes. Its intention was to be a loopable video.
In 2014, Benjamin Bennett began streaming four hour intervals of him sitting and smiling. Literally, that's it. <laughs> Very accurate title. During sitting and smiling number five, a little over a halfway through, someone broke into his house. They opened the front door, but Benjamin asserted his dominance by keeping his sitting and smiling stance, which ultimately saved him from a burglary because the man left upon seeing Benjamin. He then continued the stream and nearly nine years later, occasionally does the sitting and smiling streams. Rejected is an early 2000s animation that perfectly represents the crude humor of the 2000s. I had to show this shit to my friends in sixth grade with my unblocked YouTube proxy. The story is that in 1999, Don Hertzfeld was commissioned to animate segments for the Family Learning Channel, but that they were all rejected. It starts off with typical 2000s banana humor, then progressively gets more weird and vulgar. Lots of violence, then it breaks the fourth wall and ends with the characters on the paper being destroyed. Petscop is fascinating to me. It's one of my favorite web series. The aesthetic of an adorable video game that turns eerie at a moment's notice combined with the speculated backstory just makes it perfect. It has depth without being too in your face about it. You can still assign your own meaning to it and it's entertaining to watch. Plus has an awesome soundtrack. The series follows a guy named Paul playing a lost 1997 PlayStation game that he found. It starts off normal enough, but it quickly takes an odd turn and the disheartening storyline unfolds. Due to the repeated mentions of rebirthing and Newmaker, it's most likely based on the tragic story of Candace Newmaker. Candace was a child who was killed during a sick rebirthing pseudotherapy session. The song Julie and Candy by Boards of Canada was also inspired by it, making Petscop and Boards of Canada a little bit connected. The new maker case is absolutely disgusting, so I like to think of both pieces of art as a sort of honor to her. The Centrifuge Brain Project is a short film about the fictional researching firm Institute for Centrifugal Research, or the ICR. Its premise is that the ICR discovered merry-go-rounds increased creative activity in children, which led them to further investigate what role centrifugal force plays in human development, with the end goal being to expand the mind. The company doesn't accept the laws of physics and created tests disguised as amusement park rides in order to determine human endurance. We then see a multitude of these uncanny and dreamlike roller coasters that I just love. I've said this before, but they remind me of a human version of Super Monkey Ball. Next up is Below the Surface. These will be things that almost everyone who is into internet oddities will know about, but isn't well known outside of the niche bubble. Local 58 is pretty much credited for coining the term analog horror, and has since inspired the current era of weird YouTube that we're in now. I figured it belonged in this tier instead of the tip of the iceberg because even though it's the poster child for analog horror, it's still a somewhat niche genre. The series follows a television channel located in Mason County, West Virginia. Throughout time, the broadcasts would keep getting hijacked and these ominous interruptions are what the YouTube channel consists of. I think it's incredibly well done, the editing is realistic, and it really feels like it's set in its own little world. The creator, Chris Straub, also made Candle Cove. In the original story, Candle Cove aired on Channel 58, so naturally we can assume the two are connected, which is pretty cool. Thisman.org is a website that was made in 2008. Its claim was that ever since 2006, there had been thousands of reports of people seeing this man in their dreams. The first sighting being a psychiatry patient who drew the infamous sketch during an appointment. The psychiatrist then sent the photo to colleagues whose patients claimed to have also seen this man in their dreams. The website states that it aims to help and communicate with those who have seen him and to understand who this man is and why he appears in an apparently patternless array of situations in the dreams of such diverse human subjects. It gained traction in 2009 and has been extremely well known ever since. While a hoax, the dude's face is pretty eerie and dream horror, if that's what you want to call it, is something that can make me a little uncomfy. I have absurdly vivid dreams that have continuously bothered me throughout my life, so I'm assuming that's why. 
possibly in Michigan, is a 1983 short film, but it was popularized online circa 2015 and has only continued to circulate thanks to its perplexity. It's a musical horror film about a man named Arthur stalking two women in a perfume store. The songs featured can only be described as hilariously surreal, the most well-known being the perfume song about mother's crazy sister Kate who put her poodle in the microwave, not to eat it, but to dry it. The film ends with Arthur following the women home in an attempt to kill them, but he ends up being the one that gets shot and the two women eat soup as the garbage man takes away Arthur's body parts in trash bags. Alan Tutorial follows a man who has an obsessive passion for giving tutorials no matter how mundane the task. The first video was how to leak on a piece of paper. He also teaches us how to fill a tiny bin with dirt, crush a Dr. Pepper can with slats of wood, complete the couscous challenge, and much more. But eventually the series takes a turn from offbeat to much darker. Alan locks himself out of his house, then gets held captive by a person or people that we never get to see ourselves. He continues to make tutorials, briefly switches to reporting news, but returns to his beloved tutorials. Shortly after this though, he begins uploading short, shaky, and grimy looking videos that appear to be his attempts at escaping his captivity. Thankfully, during his last upload, Alan escaped and was never to be seen on YouTube again. The creator, Alan Resnick, has said Alan was based on an exaggerated version of himself, and it seems to have been an art project personal to him. Shay St. John is a fictional character whose backstory is that she was a supermodel that suffered a train accident, which resulted in her rebuilding her body with mannequin parts. In the most popular video, Hand Thing, Shay and another mannequin type person repeatedly move their hands in this certain motion while saying, still doing that hand thing? Heard you were doing that hand thing today. What is that hand thing? <laughs> Etc. 56 videos in total were created of this Shay character by Eric Fournier. He uploaded them to a live journal starting in 2003. The videos consist of Shay doing other weird, sometimes unexplainable activities, all with that same absurd vibe. Eric sadly passed away in 2010, and I hope he rests in peace. Edward Musker began uploading to YouTube using the pseudonym Adarem in 2006. It wasn't until 2009 when he recorded himself lip syncing to Pretty Woman and went viral. Little do the viewers know, Edward had lost his local programming job back in 1986 after being arrested for sexual battery. The stipulations of his probation ordered him to not own a computer, so when officials noticed he was uploading to YouTube, they investigated, but since nothing incriminating was found on his computer, he was given extra probation years instead of being sent back to prison. After this, he could no longer upload to YouTube, but attempted to find a loophole and had his friend upload the videos for him. This was still considered a breach in his probation and was later sentenced to five years in prison where he passed away to cancer. History repeated itself in a way with a very similar thing happening regarding the Plasma Master Dawn situation. Agamemnon Counterpart was an art project created in 2001 that was later uploaded to YouTube and turned into a creepypasta. The video reads, in the year 2571, a video cassette tape was found in a pile of rubble on the ruins of a certain blue planet. What you are about to witness will not be the contents of the forementioned cassette. This is an entirely different recording. The video then shows footage of two creatures while the text, let's make a new friend, appears above them. Only mere seconds later, the quality decays as we hear screaming that was taken from the 1972 French film Cries From Within, and surreal psychedelic visuals occur. This video was so ahead of its time in terms of analog horror, and it's one of my favorites. In the late 2010s, with the popularity of liminal spaces growing, people started to talk about the certain vibe that Mario 64 had. Now, this game had always been victim to being the subject of weird YouTube videos, considering the Lost Big Star Secret, SMG4's content, and many others. But in 2020, the every copy of Mario 64 is personalized trend began. In the first one, it shows a TV with the game on screen. Mario makes his way to where Bowser in the Fire Sea is supposed to be, but instead is met with a giant Wario head that chases him. 
after this video, a multitude of others have followed and I love these videos. I used to speed run Mario 64. I always think about getting back into it and I honestly am just a huge Mario fan. I just ordered a 1988 lunchbox thermos combo off of eBay and it arrived the day that I'm filming this. <laughs> Clockman is essentially the face of lost media. Putting the lost aspect aside, the cartoon itself is amusingly strange, so I've decided to include a few of the more odd lost media examples because they're their own variation of the weird side of the internet. The search for Clockman all began in 2012 when a Flood Forums member inquired about their vague memory of seeing the quote, terrifying short as a child, adding it was burned into their mind even 28 years later. After years of searching with no luck, people started speculating it was a fictitious story and that Clock Man didn't exist. But in 2017, the animation was randomly found on YouTube. Usually when people recall scary childhood memories, it turns out to be a lot more innocent than expected. But with the scene where Clockman drags Sally down the stairs and the overall energy of the short, it is admittedly pretty peculiar. Heaven's Gate was a cult that was founded in 1974. The basis of their belief was that those who followed the religious movement would be able to transform themselves into immortal beings by rejecting their human nature. They advocated for drastic lengths of self-renunciation, thinking this would help them ascend to heaven or what they refer to as the next level. They believed the human body was merely a container for the soul and pretty much like death wasn't actually real is kind of a way to paraphrase it. The founders were convinced they were the end time witnesses mentioned in Revelation 11. The cult took an extreme turn when the leaders convinced the members it was time to leave the world and a total of 39 members went down the sewer slide. Sometime before the infamous event, they created a website that is still up to this day where you can read all about their purpose and even exit statements by members before their death. It's very strange and in a way sad. Dog of Man is the second David Firth animation we'll be discussing. The short begins with a man crying at what appears to be some sort of plant. Then a dog ascends from a platform. The dog walks over to the man, where the man inserts a device into the dog's head, giving him the ability to speak. He says, the tree has friendly growths, yet you do not. You are terribly sad. Indicating he was crying because the tree had these friends, but he didn't and felt incredibly lonely. They go to the store to get tumor seeds in order for him to acquire his own friendly growths, then proceed to plant them in his chest. When the tumor starts to grow and ultimately will kill him, the dog tells the man he's willing to offer him his body. The video ends with the dog-man hybrid thanking the tumor-ridden torso. Lomando.com is an interactive horror website that takes you on a journey of puzzles. It takes place in a haunted amusement park called Fancy Island, with the goal of the game being to rid the park of ghosts in order to return it to the successful establishment it once was. It consists of puzzles filled with horror imagery, screamers, RPG-style battles, and even a first-person shooter section that takes place on a roller coaster. After beating the final boss that's an evil cat, it turns into a cute cat and the end. Pickle Surprise was made in 1989 by Tom Brubnitz and features RuPaul before he was RuPaul. It was posted to YouTube in 2009 with the title SCP-8161J. However, the uploader notes it isn't an official SCP, just a joke. This upload is very grainy in visual quality and there has since been a 60 frames per second version posted. The video shows an array of ham, English muffins, and relish sandwich spread. RuPaul says, this is tasty, and when asked, what is it, another character shushes the camera, adding, it's a surprise. This is when Tom Rubinitz, in blue chin cosplay, bounces into the frame saying, pickle surprise, and starts assembling the sandwich. After being instructed to repeat the ham mantra, they then all participate in doing so. RuPaul brings up a valid point asking, where's the pickle? And the drag queen replies with, that's the surprise. It became a decently popular meme, and this is where I thought would be a good time to end the below the surface segment. Middle of the iceberg is going to be things you're probably only aware of if you've been active in the internet mystery sort of community.
The Museum of Anything Goes was technically released as a CD-ROM game, but it's been popularized online thanks to Vinny from Vine Sauce and Nexpo. Plus, I love the surreality of it, so decided to include the game. In the beginning, you're put in front of the museum entrance where a ball with eyes tells you how to operate the game. Once clicking on the door, a skeleton walks by, warning you not to go in there, stating, look what happened to me. Obviously, you enter the museum anyway, and you embark on your bizarre, dreamlike adventure. There's so much to it, it's one of those things that you just have to play yourself. At a certain part, a body is buried during a funeral, and when you click on the casket, it shows a clip of a man handling what appears to be a human body. When Vinny saw this while streaming, he was immediately distraught because of how grotesque and realistic this object looked thinking it could be an actual dead body. After Nexpo included this in his mysteries and online video games, he debunked it as a pig carcass, but even without a human body, it is one terrifically weird game. Speaking of Vine Sauce and Nexpo again, we have the tale of the evil farming game. In 2016, user Sparta213 posted to r slash tip of my joystick inquiring about a game he vaguely remembered. The post reads, all I can remember is that it's kind of like Harvest Moon, but with a dark twist. The game starts out with you and your wife. One night you get into a fight and you end up stabbing her to death. Now the game revolves around you farming to stay alive while trying to keep the town from finding out about the incident that happened. Every now and then the cops come to search your house and you have to hide her corpse. People took interest in the post, but the attention fizzled quickly. That was until four years later in 2020, when Nexpo covered it in a video of his. It rapidly gained traction, even obtaining its own subreddit. And Wang made a video shortly after, only increasing the search's prevalence. Similar to Clockman, there were plenty of doubts surrounding the game's legitimacy, and some thought Sparta had completely made it up. But about a year and a half later, user PM Me Your Ears found this clip of an old Joel of Vinesaw stream. It, it honestly, it, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like Harvest Moon, but with like corpses. It's just regular Harvest Moon with your wife, and midway in the game, you have an argument with your wife, and you accidentally kill her. You kill her with like a, a, a barbecue uh, kebab uh, rack. Like a, you impale her accidentally, and you're like, oh shit, I didn't mean that. And at the same time, as you gotta like manage your farm, you know, raise your chickens and milk the cows, you also gotta like. Uh, hide the body from the cop sometimes from health security checks and uh yeah sparta then confirmed this was in fact the so-called evil farming game while on the topic of video games catastrophe crow or crow 64 is an arg that surrounds an unfinished n64 game the arg was born when adam butcher uploaded a video to youtube titled what happened to Crow 64? He begins the video by saying he received a package for a game that he believes no one has ever played. Adam endlessly hunted online until he at last found a copy on eBay. He then shows the footage of the game. Starts off pretty ordinary, but like most video game based ARGs, it begins glitching and the crow no clips into a black area. Then it shows another crow on a boat who proceeds to jump off. You end up in a foggy, Silent Hill looking area and find an open grave. You're then brought to a house where the game ends like this. YouTube channels began covering it, people became invested, and the complete story unfolded. It's an impressively well done ARG, like there are so many little crafted details. Even though the Game Theorist video on it has tons of views, I never hear anyone bring it up anymore and because of that, I consider it massively underrated. Spoolsberg Toast Boy is an animated trilogy created by David Firth. It's a backwards running series with the first being considered episode zero, followed by negative one and negative two. It follows Toast Boy who lives in a dreary, unnerving world filled with beetles and enigmatic, disturbing events. I'm going to describe the episodes in the order that the events actually happened. Toast Boy hears someone crying for help, which is revealed to be a beetle that was merely practical joking. This beetle says he's been watching Toast Boy even in the shower. He then gets grabbed by a claw where we learn he works in the Toast Workhouse as a Toast Slave. 
A bunch of messed up shit happens because the Beatles began giving Toast Boy hallucinations due to the fact they think pleasant thoughts are unhealthy. And by the end of the episode, Toast has lost his sister. These Beatles continue watching Toast Boy and feeding him terrifying hallucinations. In the second episode, they eventually kill his grandmother. Finally, he goes to a doctor's appointment, but the appointment leads him to a room in which a beetle then kills him. It's very depressing, and the main background music being Stone and Focus by Aphex Twin and Clara Rockmore's rendition of Valsi Sentimentali encapsulates the atmosphere perfectly. Salad Fingers has always been a comfort thing for me, but Spoolsberry Toast Boy is what I watch if I want to feel rather somber. The Films of Nanny Lynn is a 90s children's animation that features three different short stories. It was brought to people's attention via the obscure media subreddit and gained a larger following after Barely Sociable made a video surrounding the mystery of this film. No one knew exactly where it came from or who created it, why it was so unexplainably bizarre and at times very dark for a kids show, with allusions to the Srebrenica massacre in Bosnia, dissolving children, a baby eating a rat, and way more than we have time to cover today. It's the kind of thing that would deserve a dedicated video. The film has a lot of mystery it factor and people became enveloped in getting an answer as to where it exactly came from. Eudoxia Mysteries made his own video covering the topic and thankfully Nanny Lynn herself reached out to him, giving the full backstory. She made them to entertain her six grandchildren when they were little, back in the 90s. The stories were inspired by the things that interested her grandchildren. Dinosaurs, princesses, all kinds of animals, and anything exotic, vaguely scientific. Adding her family were all news junkies and the war in Bosnia was happening. Very sweet story and nothing sinister at all, much like Pink Morning Cartoon. I didn't know if you guys would want me to include both since they're extremely similar and like I'd put them in the same tier, but I'm most likely going to upload a full version of the iceberg at some point, so if you'd like me to include Pink Morning Cartoon in that, let me know. There are also a lot of entries I cut before finishing the script that I could include in the full version as well. Just let me know what you want. <laughs> Aki Nawan Idol, which appears to translate to a variation of idol cooking, is a video from the same creator as username 666. It starts with a static screen, then cuts to a dark red room, seemingly only lit by two candles. It stays on this shot for about 10 seconds, then half jump scares to the face of a doll. This is the doll's cooking show. The text reads, happy, 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 and I like red food, along with cooking instructions like please prepare the tomato and please don't cut your neck. The doll then asks you to please listen to her song, then proceeds to eccentrically shake around with the captions, I like rotten food, and just keeps shaking until she jump scares you again and shows you her beautiful dish. Tyler's Last Words was a video uploaded by the channel Delarge Tyler in 2011. It fade into obscurity after posting for the years to come, until randomly in 2018 it showed up in Everyone's Recommended. The video is of a man singing an honestly really beautiful song with lyrics that imply he wants to be with his deceased wife again. After finishing the song, he bleakly stares into the camera, holds an object to his temple, closes his eyes, and the video ends. The description reads, This is my brother's last song to his wife, as he requested in his note. I'm sorry if this offends anyone. I love my brother and I owe this to him. We miss you, Tyler. May you and Victoria be happy together again. Viewers were perplexed as to if this was a true story, some sort of art project, or a blatant hoax. Eventually, the man was identified as musician Austin Cross, and a while back, I was lucky enough to get into contact with him. He explained the meaning behind the song, which is symbolism for what he felt were the worst parts of himself, and Victoria represented the victory he wanted to achieve, and it was intended as a form of art. A more in-depth version of the story is in my internet hoax video if you'd like to hear more about Tyler's last words. Before Poppy, there was Mars Argo. 
She and Titanic Sinclair were in a relationship back in the early to mid 2010s and began creating content together, one being their computer show. Disclaimer again, Titanic Sinclair is a piece of shit and their relationship together was unhealthy. He abused her, then after their breakup, he tried to recreate the same thing he was going for, but using Poppy. Very messed up situation, just wanna clear that up before I talk about it, and there's obviously more to it than my brief explanation. But Mars and Titanic made an abundance of surreal, quirky videos together and even produced some music. Their most popular video together was Delete Your Facebook. Titanic says he can't hear out of his left ear, and Mars tells him he needs to go to a doctor. They then welcome you to their computer show. They start making comments about social media culture and repeatedly say, delete your Facebook. This continues for a couple minutes, then they go back to having a conversation, this time about their next video. Titanic says it's going to be reenacting the death of Philip Seymour Hoffman. They talk about drugs, then the video ends. A few years later, when he was working with Poppy, they created just a three minute loop of her saying, delete your Facebook. This repetition of recreating the Mars content happened with a lot of Poppy videos. Now they are both free of him. There are actually two video dating tapes that could fit in this video, so I'm including both of them. The second will be in part two, but the first is another David Firth animation. It starts with a woman watching an advertisement for a dating service. She receives a VHS tape and plays the video. It's of a man named Jake who says he is 39 years young and a TV salesman. He lives in a transportable cupboard that has a hole in it which allows him to watch children play in the park. Jake says he likes the park because of the red trees and balloon man Morgan who gives him kisses. He's going to see him in his caravan on Sunday to play games. It then cuts to the woman who at first looks horrified but then she dials Jake's number and smiles hoping for a chance at love. Ensuring Your Place in Hell is a DVD that compiles a total of four disturbing home videos. The first being the infamous Grave Robbing for Morons, where a young man details how to rob graves and talks about the process of doing so for nearly half an hour, all while holding an allegedly real human skull. It's been about eight years since people first started investigating the video to verify its legitimacy, but all this time later, it still hasn't been debunked and the identity of the guy remains unknown. The second is Cooking with Huck Botko, which thankfully has been proven as fake, but consists of a man contaminating desserts in various disgusting ways, such as spit, then progresses to putting disease-ridden blood in a cake that he takes to his family's Christmas celebration, and a lot more. <laughs> Huck Botko is another one of those few things that just like freaks me out. I hate the idea of germy or contaminated food, like I just can't do it. Next video on the compilation is Mortuary of the Dead, where two people sneak into a morgue, mess with the dead bodies, and consistently joke around with the seemingly no regard for the fact that they're in a morgue. It's a frolicking mortuary moment. Lastly, the final video, Exploding Varmints, where a man tells the camera he's going to show people how to obtain permission from landowners to hunt varmints. Then the rest of the video is literally just them hunting and killing animals. The method of getting permission was just asking the landowners. Very bizarre and disconcerting DVD. And with that, we've completed the first half of the iceberg and have come to a temporary end. I'm going to try my best to get part two out as soon as I can. I will say my birthday is on the 18th and at the time of you hearing this, I have no idea if it's before or after that or even on the day of, but my point is I'll be a little more busy due to celebrating that. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been honestly really fun so far compiling all of these things and I'm excited to show you all the rest. Thank you.